Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. I'm sitting with my best friend Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, homie? Nothing, man. Um, it's that time of year that uh, well, we get to do two things today. We get to talk to Gordon Miller about the state of the industry, which is I uh, honestly becomes you know like one of my favorite or not. I'm not gonna say my favorite podcast, but the one that I look forward oh. to. I love recording it. You know, I love I love I love hearing about um about where we see it. Also, like to um put Gordon in the corner and go, what did we get right last year? What did we get wrong last year? You know, so I like to do that as well. But also, you know, we just announced uh, Presley Poe and Friends. Um, for 2023 so that's march 25th and 26th in the great state of maryland and boy do we have a cast this year dude uh man, i don't even know where to start it, it, the lineup is killer you well know, we can you start can, with presley yeah it's, well presley poe and friends right so so saturday night is the show night um you can uh get tickets for the show uh also we have uh a vip experience where uh you can actually spend time with all the artists um and and there's all, that, that's very limited right so i mean that's that's very limited so there's only a few tickets for that uh and then you can uh the next day purchase class tickets with with and do hands on with all these guys uh the next day it, it it's to do hands on with the, with the artists that we have lined up is and it, and they're small intimate classes yeah so it's it's pretty exciting it is. It, it kind of how we've we've wanted to do this a little bit different is that the whole weekend is a la carte. So you know, you just you just attend and you just go to what you want to. Um and, and like you said, like we're doing um our event Saturday evening. Um you can get tickets uh, at pressypoeandfriends.com. So we do our Saturday and then if you want to add on the VIP before the show, you're gonna get to hang out with the artists right before they go up and live. So that'll be pretty exciting too. <laughs> the funny thing is it, you'll see, you know, like we're supposed to be uh hosting uh, the show and the, uh, but you'll in the classrooms and you'll see us, uh, we're just as, as big as fans as, as anybody else, uh, that weekend. Sure. And we try to learn and absorb and, and, and be right there with you guys to try to take in the knowledge that these, uh, these masters have. Yeah, that's amazing. I can't, dude, I'm so excited. I, 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 I love, love, love this event. I love that, um, that, that we're able to get the, uh, the educators, <sighs> That I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just you know humbled and flattered that that these educators even want to work with us. These the beautiful of thing I think I think about a lot of this is that you know we're allowing some of the brands to participate, but the brands aren't running the show. We're allowing artists uh, come together that work for separate brands. The brands are removed, so you, you we're, we're getting people to be able to collab together that normally wouldn't be able to collab at, collab at most shows. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely right. I mean, like, like Presley with Cosmoprof and, um, and, you know, uh, Sam, like so involved with salon centric and that whole L'Oreal world to, to be able to put them on stage together is, is a pretty unique situation, you know, um, during COVID, we saw a lot of that when the brands weren't at the shows, but it's really neat that we're able to kind of bring that, bring that home, so to speak. Yeah. So, you know, to get these guys together and you have an opportunity to be there, uh yeah so make sure you, yeah make sure you, and then make sure you come hang out with us and because we're going to be there uh right beside you and trying to trying to learn as much as we can as well yeah we'll be the guys in the corner with the big cheesy smiles <laughs> we're just as excited to be there as everyone else so again that's presleypoeandfriends.com um it's live man go get your tickets uh right this second right now um before everything sells out um, like I mentioned before, dude, I'm excited about, about, uh, about this podcast today. We got our, we got our dear friend Gordon Miller on, and I, I can't thank him enough for just the friendship over the years and the guidance over the years. Um, but yeah, you know. so, so we, uh, we get to talk about this state of the industry. And like I said, uh, it's one of my favorite uh, conversations, but I, that's not where I want to open up, Tony. I don't know what's going on with Gordon, but there's so much going on that we need a little bit of explanation because um, he officially left Hairbrained in the last quarter of last year. And, um, you know, this being the first quarter of this year, you know, he's uh, he, he's up to some cool stuff. So um, I want to get into that. 
Yeah, and, be, and before we get into that too, I want to thank Gordon as well because we wouldn't really be where we are today without him. And, you know, he's he was a huge help for us from the get go, and you know, we thank you, and uh, we really, really have a special place in our heart for you, Gordon. Absolutely, oh, ditto, ditto, guys. And I consider myself one of your biggest fans, but uh, every time I turn around, you got another freaking fan, and <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm just I feel like I'm sliding down the list because it's gotten so crowded. So, oh, congrats, so congrats on all that you guys continue to do, and and I love the fact that you spread your wings into events going back a little bit now and you're keeping it going and 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 as you mentioned you know the the list of artists you have coming in is amazing but first and foremost it's a testament to all the good work you have done um in this space this content creation space this podcast space uh and and uh unlike me um you're very public podcasters you're everywhere <laughs> carrying your equipment around and you know and, and doing great stuff so again kudos I mean, Gordon, honestly, it's like, like I said before, it's just so humbling. I can't, I can't believe that we started this a couple of years ago and now we're doing a show with, with, with Sam and Presley and A-Rod yep. and Rebecca Taylor, you know, that it just, it blows me away. These are the people that we watched, you know, as fans, you know, from, from a distance and not actually be able to work hand in hand with them. It's just, it's just, it's just a testament that, that if you set your heart to something in this industry, you can make it happen. You know, um, I heard people talk. What's it? it might have even been Tabitha, but like, if you really like focus your life for six months, like it can change the, the rest of your life. And Tony and I were talking last week about just how that that's a testament to what we, that, that, you know, what this podcast has become, you know, we were really, really focused for about a year on it. Um, and not that we're not focused on it. That sounds really bad, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like we decided it, it took us a year to decide to change our lives and, 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 and we've been able to do that. And it's been just an incredible and incredible ride. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, I think it's important we all acknowledge this from time to time that what you're doing changes other people's lives. I mean, I think that's the great thing. It's what I love about podcasting and, and bringing other people to the, to the stage. It's not me, you know, it's, it's the voices that we get to share and, and, and the opportunity that brings to, to our audiences and, and a lot of it, and you get these messages, I get these messages. I heard X, Y, and Z and my life changed and, you know, it doesn't get any better. No, it doesn't. I literally got one of those messages this morning. I haven't even shared it with Tony yet, but uh, I, I'll, I'll certainly send that over. But uh, Robin Spalding down in, a, in, in in Florida, just, you know, she said that she was cleaning, uh, cleaning houses while she was trying to make it as a hairdresser and mm. to our podcast while she was doing that. And, and, and once she took a lot of tools that, that, that we had shared, not Tony and I had shared, but our guest had shared and, 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 and how it was a part of her. I mean, dude, you talk about like, you know, just giving you the chills all day and like you walk on cloud nine. Th yep. That's absolutely, absolutely amazing. Tony, I'll send that over to you in a couple minutes. Yeah. So and that's why we do it. I mean, literally, yep. Corey and I, when we, before we even started, you know, how does this impact hairdressers' lives or barbers' lives? How does this elevate the industry? Yep. Because if it's not doing it, I really don't want to do it. And so we, when we talked it out and figured it out, and I mean, you know, even if like, from the beginning, even if we bring on or help other pocket to elevate the industry and it kind of like removes us from it, we're, we're in, you know what I mean? Yeah. As long as it's bettering everybody in the space. So. And, I, and I'm following your footsteps in a way, because, you know, I started podcasting seven years ago with American Salon when I was the publisher. And so I had, a, you know, I had a big audience to lay that, po that podcast in front of, which is, you know, is a nice thing, you know, whether you're working for a big brand with a big audience and you get to be on their platforms or, or you're a podcaster and I'm working in media. Then I went to Hairbrained five years ago, same thing, you know, big audience. Um, I, my job in part was to grow that audience and did that successfully by almost four times over the course of the last five years. But again, the podcast gets this big audience. When I, when I decided to leave, I was like, oh, I got I got to keep podcasting. And knowing I would be starting from scratch, like no audience. <laughs> and, um, and it's, it's, uh, I'm on my, I just launched my third episode with Tabitha Coffee and it's, it's off to a, a, a fantastic start. I'm, I'm most excited, but my future is all about doing things in a small way. So if I reach a, a, a handful of people in a good way, you know, that they get something from it, I'll, I'll be thrilled. But, um, I think once you get into this form, it's hard to let it go because it's, uh, it's such an intimate form that we get to talk to people almost one-on-one, -on -one, you know, by way of these microphones. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. I, I don't, I, I, I can't, uh, again, even if there wasn't the hair industry podcast, I, I think I would, you know, still try to put content out somehow, not yeah. even content, it's just the conversation, but I kind of figured to get the conversation, you have to have the content to do it, you know, otherwise, yeah. you, know, you know, but, but yeah, for sure. It's just the most amazing, like intimate uh, kind of thing, um, you know, format. 
Um, when you brought it up, Gordon, you said you were when you left Hairbrain, you continued the podcast. What 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 not what happened? What what? Well, I'll do the what happened too. You know, because it's a good part of the story. So first and foremost, um, I left Hairbrain. Uh, my last official day was October thirty first of of twenty twenty two, and. I, so that was the, I had just come up on my five-year anniversary. Um, I, I think it was in July. And um, it was interesting. Um, you know, five years is a long time. And I, I came with some really specific goals. I, I've been a member of the Heron Brain community since the get-go. I was a huge cheerleader. I helped the guys establish their business model when they were kind of new to all of it. And we're like, how do we make money doing this? And, and you know, we, we had those conversations. I've had them with so many people over, over the course of my career. And so they were struggling with that. And I was like, okay, let me share with you some thoughts on how you can build this thing. Again, this is going way back before I was ever directly involved. Um, and over the years, just, you know, promoted them as, as a member of the community, as a friend. I believed in it. I still believe in it. Um, and then, you know, five years ago, I decided to leave the publishing business and American Salon as publisher and, and VP of their digital because I kind of saw the end of print coming. And I was like, I want something new and different and was going to go into consulting and then ended up um, getting an offer from Hairbrain. Um, with that came ownership. So I remain one of the owners. So I still have a connection to Hairbrain. I'm still involved as an owner of Hairbrain. But I decided to step away from the, all the day to day. Because when I kind of had that five year moment, I'm this person every so often, I've got to sit down and check off my goals. So I go back to my original plan. What was I thinking five years ago, just to kind of remind myself, and I looked at the document that we had put together together and I read everything and I was like, oh, I did this and I did this and I did this and I did this. And then I read the last sentence that said, and by the way, I will likely leave Hairbrain 12-31-22. And I wrote that in April of 2017. And when I read that, I was like, oh, that's why I feel this way. Like, that's why I feel like I've kind of done everything I came to do. And I'm thinking about, well, what else do I want to do with my career? I mean, I, those things have been on my plate for a while but that I couldn't do it harebrained. And I'm at that point where I'm like, I'm coming up on the last chapter of my career. You know, I've got another three to five years is the way I look at my professional life. And, you know, I've had a bunch of really good jobs, you know, um, six different important roles in the industry. I, I, I've never, I've, I've never applied for a job since I was 22. Like I've always been offered jobs. So that says wow. something. I've always felt success when I was leaving. I always feel like I left in the right way. And so I wanted to do some th new things in media, um, including my approach to podcasts, which is short form now. Um, I wanted to do some podcasting for a big, bigger company and brand, perhaps as a host and producer, which I'm working on that. Um, I wanted to create a new form of media because I think media has kind of gone sideways. So, you know, I started a website, I've got a newsletter and I'm doing things, but I'm really playing with the form. It, it would be more unfolded in the next six months, I think, as to what I do right. And it's a big experiment. Um, and I want to do events like real time events, um, as well as digital events. And in my work with brands every day, you know, as CEO and president of Hairbrain, I, I, I was always talking to them about the experience of COVID and how hybrid events, what that meant. And I've always been one to look outside the industry and participate outside the industry to find good stuff. And I kept saying to everybody who would listen, I'm like, we're not doing hybrid events. What we think are hybrid events, they kind of suck. We need, we need to fix this, you know, for, to, to better serve our audiences and to better serve professionals. So I'm just going to do my small version of that. And then the last piece of my decision was I kind of got myself into this, like, where's the, where's the world going? And I had this, I was listening to a newscast and they were talking about politics. And they said, all politics is local. And I had this moment, I went, I just said, ooh, all beauty is local. And that led me to smallness. And, and because I was struggling with the bigness of everything during COVID, how everybody was online, the audience has become so large. People are always talking about community, but I'm like, community feels like it's kind of gone. It's like a cliche almost, because if you have 2 million followers, you don't have a community, you have an audience. So I, you know, I just had this big brain shift of like, I want to go small and I want to prove the power of small and small doesn't mean one person or five people. You can have a hundred employees and still have a less is more and kind of smaller one-on-one -on -one approach to how you do business. So I, I, I'm in a different state of mind. Um, let the guys know many months before leaving that that was my plan and came to an agreement on how that would work. Uh, Gerard's taken over the podcast. Again, I remain an owner. And uh, life is good, and I've uh, I've had a little bit of time to rest, and I'm hitting the ground running. 
And uh, yeah, the new website, social, socialbeautymakers.com. There's a newsletter. Go sign up for it. <laughs> that's also the um, that's also the name of the uh, the podcast. So uh, yes, it is as yes, well. It, so yeah. you, you can find that on like you know on any of your uh, any of your podcast uh, what platforms what, uh, platforms. Yep. Yeah, thank you. As well as on the as well as on the site. So you know it's it's all there. So anyway, so you're gonna tell me what I got wrong last year? <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, <laughs> Well, actually, I don't think you got much wrong last year, at least the conversation oh, that we had God. last year. Um, so uh, we're talking about state of the industry. You know, in 2020, I kid it that you got everything wrong. <laughs> you know, like my like, like, pan, like, like pandemic. The entire world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the pandemic. I had COVID brain. <laughs> <laughs> you totally did. Uh, yeah, and that, we released that. I think it was like four weeks before the uh, the pandemic took yep. off. So, yep. yeah, you, you, you failed miserably there. However, in 2021, we came back and and your thought was um, what was a little more pessimistic, right? Like like we thought we were going to lose a lot of salons. We thought we were going to lose a lot of, uh, of industry people um, as far as hairdressers go. We thought that a lot of salons would close up. We thought that the suites would close up. You know, we, we, we this is kind of what we were talking about in 2021. Fair. But fair to, to Gordon, he was right. We did lose a lot, but we gained a lot at the same time. So even right. though the numbers looked the same, it it just shifted. So he, I mean, he he was kind and of I, right. Yeah, and I and I and I I'm gonna go back and listen to it because because throughout pandemic, I was one of the voices saying, well, not as many people are leaving as everybody's saying because there were people. A third of the industry is gone, and I was pretty consistent. Unless I had been drinking on your podcast, I was otherwise pretty consistent. Where I was just kind of like, it's not as bad as people think. Mm -hmm. Well, that's. I mean, that's where we went in 2022. I mean, from 2022, when we looked backwards, you were like, no, actually, like we had a pretty positive year. We had a pretty yeah. um, a posi uh, positive year, and then um. And yeah, so here we are in 2023, like we, 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 I'm not going to say the pandemic's over, but it's certainly in the rear view mirror and certainly right. for the industry, where's the industry going? How, right. what, what have the big, we talked a little bit about it last year, but you know, we, we talked about, you know, how the industry has fast forwarded five years. Where are we now? You know, uh, uh, let's, let's, let's start there. Yeah. So, so where do you think we are um, as far as, as, as moving forward and, 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 What's the good? What's the bad? What's the last year look like? I think, you know, the, 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 the good is I don't know that we've ever been in a better place. You know, I mean, honestly, um, because when you look at this last year and what are some of the things that happened? So well, actually, let me start high level. Um, if you look at stock reports, if you talk to brands, which I try to do every day, if you talk to big distributors, they've been having really good years coming through pandemic. Um, 2021, 2022, really solid years, a lot of growth on the brand side, hair colors hitting all kinds of records. That doesn't happen if salons aren't doing well or they're not buying enough. Now, individual is always different, but the collective mass of salons is buying more than ever. Um, is um, And th these brands are benefiting from it. And these brands are excited about the work that they're doing. And they've added a lot of layers to the, how they do business. And I think they've learned a lot about you know the, the shifts, the digital shifts, the e-learning and um, are people going back to live and what does all that mean? They, they, you know, they've been sorting it out as they go. And I think um, coming into 2023, I, I think everybody's in a better place who has been focused on getting themselves to a better place. I'll say it that way. Um, because there are people who aren't. Some people listen and going, oh, it's, you know, it sucked. It's terrible. It's, you know, inflation and all that sort of stuff. But I have to say across the industry, and I'm always quizzing people, I talked to way too many people who were like, we're 20% above where we were in 2019. Some people are telling me they're 20% above where they were in 2021. Um, retail is for those who, those who are focused on retail, retail is way up. Again, some are telling me 15 to 20 to 25% up over 2019 in some cases, some are again, relative to even, even last year. And so, you know, that's a good thing. The business okay, hold on, model. hold on. I'm going to stop you right there, Gordon. Yeah. I'm, going to unpack, I'm going to unpack a couple of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a couple of questions on that too. Yeah. Okay. So I was going to ask you. So, with inflation, of course, yep. the brands, uh, a lot of the products, you know, they've raised their prices to meet yep. the inflation. Yep. You know, but not a lot of hairdressers has raised their prices to keep up with inflation. So, mm -hmm. are the hairdressers not, not so it, true, or not so is true. it? So or are, are they keeping up? I'm just I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. Or, or are yeah, they, yeah, yeah. There, or there's, are they keeping up with the inflation as well? So the so the people that I'm talking to, which and I always warn everybody, you know, people like us, we talk to what I sometimes call the unicorns. You know, those people who do 
just well in life. That's a lot of the people we know. But I purposely try to talk to a lot of other people, you know, just get I, I, I when I walk through my neighborhood, I'll pop my head in the salon as I walk by and, and, and introduce myself if I haven't before and find out how they're doing. And so generally, I believe that the pandemic gave an awful lot of people in the industry permission to raise their prices. Like in my career, I've never heard so much conversation about price increases online, on social. I've never um, had so many one-on-one -on -one conversations where people were you know, somewhat aggressive. And then very interestingly, Yelp put out a report about, I don't know, three, four months ago. And it was a, it was a, a take on cons how consumers were feeling about pricing and different business models. And salons were listed as a group of people that the Yelp reviewers thought had raised their prices too much. So they were complaining about, you know, I think they complained about the airlines. Um, and there was a third one, I can't remember, and salons, but they were really, so, so the larger world of consumers who were on Yelp called us out and said prices were too high. Now, by the way, I, I tend to agree with that, you know, so I've listened to too many people talking about how they raise their prices. And I don't think most of us um, understand inflation and what it truly means and how to do the math of inflation. But I will say whatever, we've been so underpriced for so long as an industry, more power to anybody who's raised their prices. And in, in some ways, the higher, the better. Although I would say to anybody who's thinking about raising their prices and hasn't, you know, be cautious, you know, understand your clients, you know, know where they're at economically. You know, if you're dealing with a, a middle-class clientele who's struggling financially and you raise your prices, you, you might hurt yourself more than help yourself. And the actual inflation at the business level for most is not as high as people think that it is relative to service, you know? So in, in other words, you sell something for a hundred bucks as a service, and if you've got 20% of stuff that you spent in that service, and if your inflation is, let's go high and say it's 15%, well, then your extra cost was $3, you know? So to raise your hundred dollars from 100 to 115 would be extreme. If you can do it, more power to you. But mathematically, from an understanding inflation perspective, it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, now there's another factor involved in that, and that is the personal side of inflation. Right, because you've got to say, first, well, what does it mean for my business? The best way to look at inflation is by category. So what's my inflation for my business, generally speaking, not counting wages, whether it's my personal wages or somebody else. It's my rent, you know, it's my power, you know, it's, it's all, the, all the different things that cost to run my business. And if, if you had a landlord who didn't raise your rent, you're lucky. Somebody else's inflation, therefore, who had rent go up, theirs is different than yours. So you have to do the work and figure it out. And then you have to kind of figure out, well, what does that mean for the price? So one is, yeah, the stuff. And so, and, and how do I offset that in my price? The other is that half your money probably goes to wages. If you're a commission salon, whatever that number is, then you've got to kind of look at your staff and go, well, what's their inflation? And depending on where they live, it's different. Depending on their age, it's different. Depending on, you know, if they home in a home or not, it's different. But if your staff's inflation, we'll, we'll say is uh, 13%, well, then you need to be able to offset their wages. And that's another piece of the puzzle that you got to put into your calculation of your business inflation. And it's, now it's getting a little complicated and we don't like complicated. So a lot of people just go, all right, I'm raising it 20%. And it might work, but not the best way of thinking about inflation. Sorry, I got all wonky yeah. there. No, no, the, the, but even the, I, a couple of things, kind of the way that I think about it is that, and by the way, I, I, I and I don't know this for fact, you're the fact guy, but I swear my color went from $8 a tube to $12 a tube, you know, which yeah, depending on who you're using. Absolutely. And, yeah, and there's still, so, and there's still people using color that went up a little or a lot. I, I talked to people who shifted colors to less expensive and they seem very happy. You know, different strokes for different folks. Right. And, and, you know, the, kind of the way that I think about it is that when my color goes up now, what happens is like, if I'm servicing Gordon now, like I'm paying for a portion of his appointment. If, if I don't adjust my prices to the new color costs, now I've paid that, I'm paying for that appointment, you know? No, that, well, not really, but of course you are not making as, what really is happening, I would argue, is you are not making as much money net bottom line as you were before because your costs went up. Right. So, so maybe it's a different way of saying the same thing, but mm -hmm. the simplicity of it is that it, it, you get $100, how much money did you put into that? And then, yeah, what are the rest of your costs? Your rent, you know, your, your other stuff, but you have to figure it all in.
gas, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then that was then that that was my next point, Tony. Is like when when we talk about inflation as a business, like yeah, there's inflation within my business to say X, Y, Z. But, you know, I also I'm trying to protect the lifestyle in which I have, too. So that means that yep. my spending costs on the other side, you know, it's not just about what I take in. But now I need to also make up the difference for, you know, my mortgage is, isn't changing or whatever. So, you know, I just I, I've got to be able to, to 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 raise my prices enough to uh, to counter or, or at least to make a, a pivot on that, you know. Yep. And that's the personal side. And if, if it isn't you, it's your staff, you know, so if your commission's still on and, and you say, well, we, we bring in $200,000, but a hundred thousand of it goes to wages as an employer, you should always be conscious of the people you give paychecks to and say, okay, well, those paychecks got them through life last year, but now everything's gone up 10%. So in a perfect world, companies do cost of living increases. And if you're a solopreneur, you know, you're on your own, you kind of have to take a step back from yourself and think of it the same exact way. There's the money I take out of the business for myself, but think of it like a paycheck. And it's easier, I think, to 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 be a little bit more pragmatic and, and not emotional about how you do the math of 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 your pricing. Absolutely. And and I agree with you, by the way, because I'm 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 guilty of it, is that uh, you know, I use the pandemic as as an excuse to give myself permission to raise my prices. And, and, yeah. and, you know, where I did it in the, in the past, I did it with a lot of guilt and I don't, yeah. I, don't I don't really have a lot of guilt anymore about it. Like, I'm like, Good. look at the world around you. I mean, like we, we, the, and to the point, like how I justify it in my head is like, yeah, my, my expenses have gone up too. You well, people, 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 so we, we spend so much time in the industry looking for excuses to raise our prices. We don't need excuses to raise our prices. Nobody else looks for excuses to raise their price. There's not some woe is me guy standing at the entry to my grocery store going, oh, fuck, prices went up. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like any other part of my business, my life, you know, it's like there's nobody. Only hairdressers are like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry we raised my prices. It's like, OK, shut up. Don't yeah, don't, yeah. don't even talk about it. D so, Tony and I actually have different opinions about how to do it. I just do it. And then if someone asks, I go, yes. You know, like literally on January 1st, I raised my prices 5 percent. Um, yep. Last year, I raised my prices 10 percent. Um, yep. Um, and, and I just do it. And if anyone asks, because for me, it's like I end up having two conversations about it. If I tell everyone that I'm doing it, I'm having a thousand conversations about it. And the 998 who didn't ask you about it, some of them are going to react negatively and leave. And that's the problem with talking about it, because if you talked about it to the other nine, is my point. But yeah. you talked to the two that wanted to talk about it. And there's other people put a sign in the freaking window you know, or put a sign at the desk or put a sign on their forehead, you know, which is kind of like prices are going up. I'm so sorry. You know, and it's just, it's, it's just, there's yeah, no, not, there's no role model in the world other than us who does this. That's got to be a sign. It's a bad plan. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Back to, uh, back to predictions that I effed up. No, no, you didn't have anything up. I actually, I like the new Gordon because, you know, a couple of years ago it was Mr. Pessimist. And now it's like uh, last two years, we've gotten like a uh, Mr. Mr. Positive here. Only I haven't changed at all. I, 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 I just, I just report what I see. <laughs> so if it's a, if it's a sunny day, I can be all sunny. If the clouds are out there, I'm, I'm going to get out my umbrella and, and, and hide in the corner and say, Oh, storm's coming. Well, I think for this conversation, I think if you're listening in and you're, 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 you have a salon or whatever, I think this is to give you, you to use this as permission to raise your prices because you're oh, yeah. not, there, there's no, there's never been a better need for us to raise our prices. Certainly. I mean, I guess 2008, 2009 was a reason to um, yeah. coming out of that, but, but right now, I mean, there's no better reason to do it. And I think your business is going to rely on it and demand it. But here's the difference between 2008, 2009. You know, I love economics. It was my minor in college, and I would I would have done it for a living if it paid well, but it doesn't. The um um uh, it, it, the 2008, 2009 was like a classic recession, right? So everybody got hit with crazy inflation and and all that stuff that went down. People losing their homes, and so unlike today, where everybody's spending like crazy, people like I, I go to Target, you know, I go to Macy's, I go go to the grocery stores, like. Whatever is new is like people were like, oh, give me the biggest, best, big screen, gigantic television. Christmas trees went up 25%. Who cares? We're going to buy every tree in the lot. 2008, 2009, people were like, holy crap, am I going to survive this life? And so the sensitivity of clients to pricing was very, very different. Today, today, you know, we saw in pandemic when people were suffering, like to me, like what was one of the most interesting things that happened in the professional beauty industry during the pandemic? Tips went up through the effing roof for a lot of people. Like crazy, which tells you something. Like if we were holding our prices, but they're tipping you extra, they got the cash, you know? And 
And so it is a good time because in spite of all the rumbles, um, people are still spending. And the right. question, it's like the weirdest economic quote unquote possible recession ever because inflation is high, unemployment is low and savings is high and spending is insane. It makes no sense whatsoever to the economists. So, and lastly, um, if you raise your prices and you feel good about it, yay. If you feel not so good about it, I hope you can wrap your head around it and get there. But from this moment forward, everybody promise yourself, you will raise your prices every single effing year from now till the end of your career, because that's what every other business in life does if it's going to stay in business, because inflation is always with us. It runs, you know, one, two, three, four percent in, in a typical year. And so you need to, you know, I, I would say try to raise your prices five percent a year, period, and just stay there. Clients will be trained. They know it's coming. It's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. It's not a crazy amount of money. You know, it's when you raise, it's when you don't. Here's what we do not raise our prices this year, not this year. We're nervous, we're nervous, we're nervous, we're nervous. Oh, fuck, we're so far behind. We just, we're going to go from 100 to $135. And then a lot of clients go, it's not my fault you didn't know how to raise your freaking prices. And don't tell me I saved money all this time. It's like, I didn't have anything to do with this. Now you're too expensive for me. You get, you kind of have to like slide them in slowly so they don't realize what happened. <laughs> Yeah, well, you give them a year to get used to the price before you move it up again, you know, and then, then it feels it normalizes it, right? It normalizes three, that three, three to five, three to five percent. People get used to it in five minutes. You yeah, know, as, it, as it, an it, it is as an independent, my rent goes up three percent every year. Yeah, you know, other 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 products, they're they go up. So absolutely, if you don't do it. You're going to make less money year after year after year. And, and, so, and you're going to make less money and that less money will also buy you less at the grocery store because the price of milk and eggs always goes up too. Yeah. So, so you have to raise your prices. We, people like Michael Cole and I have been saying this for 30 years, raise your prices, please. <laughs> exactly. You did a good Michael Cole there, by the way. Thank I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get the bald cap. <laughs> That's awesome. Actually, uh, uh, next week we're uh, we're having uh, Michael Cole and Britt Siva on the podcast. So, ah, nice so uh, you know, pay attention to that because that could get uh, well, hot, hot, hot. Two gener uh, two generations of of coaches coming together. I love it. Oh, dude, I'm, we are, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. The shameless plug there, you know, wait, wait for a couple of weeks. And we'll, we'll be, we'll be releasing that. I'll be listening. Okay. Gordon, real quick. I, I want one more thing on pricing and then I want to get out. Is there, do you know the number? Like how, how inflation wise, how, what's been the increase this year in the industry? Like nobody, I mentioned, like nobody knows, nobody knows. Not really, you know, because, because again, it, it, it's, it varies so dramatically and, and we're not a good research-based industry. So nobody that I'm aware of inside the industry has done a study on like prices at distributors and you know what's happened across all those different categories. I've not seen the number, but talking to everybody, we know it's gone up. I, I, I would say to be safe, people should be thinking, yeah, probably 10%, you know, but I'm just guessing. And you, as an individual business, you probably work with one distributor. It shouldn't be that hard to compare your supply bills this year versus next year. You know your rent, you know, depending on the city you live in, depending on how the relationship you have with your landlord, those are all over the place, you know? So, right. so you kind of have to know, we all have different inflation and this idea that we turn on the television, they go, Oh, it's 50%. I saw a study the other day. This is fascinating and, and to, to close this out around is that on a personal level, the wealthiest people in America, their inflation is running between zero and 2%. And a lot of that's because of the kind of stuff they buy and the, at the price they buy it at. They're good at buying a yacht and getting a deal at it. And it goes, all that stuff goes into their inflation. Everything you buy is, is factored in. We don't buy yachts, so the, the price of yachts doesn't impact us. You know, um, The people with the highest inflation in America, it's over 15% are poor people. And the reason for that is that they are buying typically in low economic areas. And I can go into those areas in Chicago where you buy a cigarette at the local store that sells cigarettes one at a time because cigarettes have gotten so expensive that in the poorest of neighborhoods, cigarettes are sold single. They literally, it's like two or $3 a cigarette. So their inflation is very high. And they're also buying at places that are price heavy anyway. It's like buying all your groceries at 7-Eleven is going to be expensive. And then people in the middle are, are somewhere else. So we do not all have the same inflation and your clients don't all have the same inflation. So if you're a value price salon and your, your clients come from more lower economics, they probably have higher inflation than if you have luxury salons. So it gets complicated. And is there a supply chain issue still? Is that have yeah. any factor in? Yeah. 
Uh, but it, who knows? I mean, yes, there definitely are. You know, anybody's bringing stuff in from China. It's nowhere near what it used to be, you know, but, but definitely I talk to companies that are still having supply chain issues on some of their goods. I'll, I'll use mannequins as one of the best examples, you know, because we bring in gazillions of mannequins every year. Uh, I was with Pivot Point for 10 years. I'm still have a lot of close friends there. And they, they have told me they continue to have some struggles. Depends on, you know, what it is and not with everything, but it's not what it was. But yes, there are, there are definitely those issues. Good question, Tone. All right, Gordon. Uh, moving forward, so I think we've uh, I think we've killed pricing here for for a thing. What what what, what, what else are you seeing uh, moving forward? Education, you know, I think is fascinating. Um, the because it was a big conversation right during COVID. It was like, okay, what you know, we're all going online. We're not all going online. People are racing back. You know, it, it was just like, what's happening? Um, fascinating because we went through over two years of it. A lot of folks learned a how to teach online. That's a big deal. You know, um, I, I I would say during COVID, I was like, you know, these platforms all take different skills. You know, you, you watch the evolution of artists who go from classrooms, you know, in the distributor realm to perhaps a small stage to perhaps a bigger stage. And then you're on the main stage, you know, Robert Crome is a gathering. Different skills to be on those stage as a presenter. Same on digital. You know, everybody had to learn how to be good on digital. It's a completely different set of skills, like to be on camera. And it also, it's also takes a, a different set of skills to shoot well in digital, you know? Um, so whether it's something like we're doing right now, worry background, a lot of people say that's the best practice if you're too lazy to move the stuff behind you. Um, <laughs> so um, I love my word background, um, but, but it, 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 it is a, a technique, you know, it's a, a device and, and we have to learn these things across everything. So, um, and as we were coming through pandemic, you know, there was this kind of industry conversation. Everybody's going back, you know, everybody's going to live, 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 live. We're, we're, we want to do that. Screw digital. Um, and we're landing somewhere in the middle. I, I would argue that we going forward, need to do a better job with digital because more people will be there. And I, I was saying this pre-pandemic, the industry needs to understand that a, min a minority of hairdressers in any given year go to education live. It has always been the case. We have four gigantic beauty shows. Those four gi gigantic beauty shows bring in probably less than 75,000 people collectively, all of them for the, for their shows. Uh, most of them are in that 15,000 uh, attendees now. Um, they, when you see the counts, if I go in two or three days, I'm counted two or three times, which is very appropriate. But the actual bodies that show up out of 850,000 working hairdressers, um, and not everybody at a show is a hairdresser, we don't have 10% of them there. Then you have distributor shows, and you start working your way through the crowd. And, and I've I long said, you know, 70% of professionals don't really make it that education. No, don't make it to any education. PBA did a great survey in 20, uh, fall of 2020 that said hairdressers were going to be going, yes, back. The numbers were about the same. But that those same hairdressers were taking a whole lot of digital. So I'm going to do two live events this year, and I'm going to do six digital events. Or I'm going to do five live events, and I'm going to do 12 digital or four digital. But what we're seeing for the first time is this layering of digital. And, and again, I would say to anybody who's, thinks it's not something that's important for the industry, that there always has been uh, a, a group of people in our industry who don't get visited by distributors. They're, the education from distributors doesn't reach them. As independence to begin with, people who work and live in economically depressed areas. Um, we know that the traditional beauty industry does not go into um, minority neighborhoods for the most part. They just don't. And so the, that access of all the stuff that distributors provides many salons, which is of high value to many of them, it doesn't reach into minority communities. And, and that's a huge fail by the industry. Um, and so digital education can help fill some of those gaps and it, it will continue to grow. Yeah. I, I, as a studio owner, I understand why we don't get visited. You know, like, like, like yeah. you know, a, 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 a person comes in from, you know, any of the distributors and maybe they only have one account in the room, you know, yep. especially if you're an independent, like, you yep. know, remove like Cosmoprof and, and, and salon centric, which seems to be the baseline, but you know, any of the independent distributors, um, you know, I, I, I get why, you know, they might only have one account in there and that person being a sweet person, isn't just buying a lot of product. However, right. that being said, that's the theory, but guess who visits us and guess who doesn't. The, the uh we never get visited by Cosmoprof. We never get visited by Salon Center, but we oh. always get visited by our by our independent distributor. Independent. And those are the one and, and those are the ones that we have relationships with, to be honest. Yeah. You know? That's interesting. Um, 
And I would argue that that was not the case 20 years ago. So what's happened in the distribution world, it's a different short conversation. The consolidation of distribution, which is now 80% owned between Salon Centric and Cosmoprof, um, changed the game. Independent distributors, all distributors were anti-booth rental for the most part 20 years ago. It was just like, they were against it, against independence. In fact, uh, PBA tried to outlaw it in Congress. They tried to make laws against rental, period. New Jersey, um, it's still illegal to rent, you know, and, and those laws came by way of some really powerful distributors. And so everybody, brands, distributors was kind of anti-rental. And I, I lived through the middle of that. And I was on the pro-rental side and had just about had my life threatened. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, um, and now independent distributors who struggle to compete with the big guys, I think have found this lane they can live in successfully and are putting more effort into it, which I think will pay off over time. But they're doing it at a high cost because I'm sure when they go visit independents, they're still scratching their head going, damn, I only got one account here to your point. It's not economically ad advantageous, but I don't have what I used to have. So I need to do a good job with this one because maybe he'll tell his four friends to come in. Right. So. That's fair. That's fair. And and since we're on distributors and stuff, so uh, the last year, there certainly has been a lot of chatter and a lot of talk about, about retail going online and not necessarily in, in, there's been these companies that have popped up, um, Salon <laughs> Interactive and stuff, you know, where- Oh, don't get me started. No, no, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so look, so big, 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 big picture. I mean, I'm really frustrated with this one because there are some coaches going, get rid of your retail. I'm like, oh God, here we go again. Um, so first off, um, misinformation. There's so much misinformation in the industry. Um, and what's fascinating is uh, retail has been a very consistent part of the industry for, for you know, the last 30 plus years. Um, and it's also consistently performed well for only about 20% of salons. So retail does over $3 billion at the salon level. So it's at the salon level, $3 billion a year. And that's been documented many times. Um, $3 billion being sold through salons. And we know that a little bit over 20% of all salons are pulling in 80% of that money, 80%. So 20% of salons are successful with retail. They're making money with retail. They're paying benefits out typically retail. They're, they're using that retail to be the reason that, that a big brand comes in and gives them free education, more education. The bigger the salon, the more retail, or even a small salon with more retail, they get more access to brand resources. And that's a good thing. It doesn't mean everybody has to retail. Everybody doesn't have to retail. I, I've, I've never said that or believed it. Retail, to me, like retail is like another service, almost like a category. It, it's completely different. Um, I'm saying this kind of metaphorically. You don't have to offer extensions in your salon. You don't. That's a choice. You don't have to offer nails in your salon. That's a choice. There's no like, oh my God, if you don't answer nails, you have nails, something's wrong with you. You don't have to do hair color. Or if you do hair color, you don't have to do fashion color. Name a service, any service, and it's pretty much optional within the industry. Um, and there are people who specialize, and there are people who are generalists, and, are, and there's everything in between. The same with retail. Retail is just another thing you can or can't do in your salon. Um, you want to sell scarves in your salon? I know people who are very successful selling accessories. That's their thing. Um, they may not even sell retail. They sell a shit ton of scarves because they wear scarves and their clients all want the scarf. Yay, more power to everybody with the scarves. Um, it's the same with retail. It's like make a choice. But those who choose not to do it or those who are in the business of encouraging other people to do it, um, let's just all be honest and truthful. There's a, I know people doing millions of dollars in retail annually, and they're not that unique. Um, they're different. You know, they've chosen to do things at a higher level, but um, you could make money doing retail should you choose to do it. And I know people in suites making a lot of money doing retail, but, you know, we're all built to do different things. You know, some people can try all day long to sell retail, follow the teachings, and it's just, it just, it, their heart's not in it. And that's okay. Yeah. You do not have to sell retail. But if you're not selling retail because you believe you can't make money because somebody said, oh, you can only mark it up 100%. And that's like, oh, that's uh, the end of the world. Uh, the average thing that's retailed in America is marked up 38%. You can find that research out there. We're, we mark up almost three times. Um, some people have said online, oh, you know, get a refrigerator. They mark them up 800 times. No, they don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. Um, uh, 
No, they don't. Um, and you can do that. You can do that research. Mattresses, fascinating. Mattresses are marked up by ten times. That's a crazy thing. Um, that's a whole industry thing. But the average, you know, it's one hundred percent markup is a nice markup. And then some people say, well, if you mark it up one hundred percent, you're just getting your money back. And I'm like, okay, that is a misunderstanding of math, plain and simple. Plain and simple misunderstanding of math. You buy a product for ten dollars, you sell it for twenty. You gave away ten. You now are holding twenty. You got your 10 back. Yes. You have an extra 10. Uh, yeah, well, this How hard is that? How hard is that? We could do a whole podcast on that uh, alone, Gordon, and I don't want to go down that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I, 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 I'd want to hold you to those numbers because because they confuse me some um, as well. Oh, let's uh, have that podcast because I, what I tell you is is the gospel. It's right and it's math, and I, I'm a math geek, and uh -huh. you can't argue with math and you can't argue with science. Okay, well, moving forward, that's a future podcast. I would love to get into that because love I, it. I need some explaining with that as well. Okay, let's bring Michael. Bring Michael with me. We'll, we'll be a dynamic duo. duo. Uh, yeah, Gordon, you have some explaining to do. <laughs> yes, uh, we'll see. Um, Gordon, real quick. So you said that, you know, like retail is like a $3 billion business. Now, my question is, and, and honestly, this is just Corey asking because I don't know yeah. the answer to it, is is that $3 billion because the salons have bought it or is that yeah. $3 billion no. to consumer? That's consumer. That's, so that is salon revenue. So of all salon revenue, and this is going, the last number I saw was because it takes us a while to catch up. So we don't have 2022 yet. It's 2021. So 2021 numbers um, was 50 some billion dollars. I don't remember the exact number in service revenue, service revenue at the salon. Someone pays a hundred bucks for a service. That's in that number. Someone buys a $20 bottle from the salon. That $20 is in the 3 billion. That's not the manufacturer number. And no. by the way, this is an interesting math for people. Most people don't know this. So what, what is three, $3 billion in, in, in sales? Let's pretend for a moment that it all went through distributors, which most things do, but not all. There are some by direct. But let's say it all went through distributors, just make it easy. That $3 billion translates into approximately $1.5 billion for the distributor. And that distributor um, bought it from a manufacturer. So of the three billion, how much did the manufacturer get? That it's it's another halving. So it's about seven hundred and fifty million. So for those who are like, oh, the brands are screwing us, you know, they get all the money. Uh, salons collectively get more money than the manufacturers do, but of course we're a bunch of whole little businesses, so it doesn't feel so big. But but that's the math, you know, because it's a, a manufacturer sells something, they double the price of the distributor, the distributor doubles it, and then the, and then the, the the salon doubles it. So again, $10 bottle that you buy at the salon, you sell it for 20, you bought it from the distributor um, for 10 and they bought it from the manufacturer for five. Mm -hmm. well, I guess the real question is what's the manufacturing cost on it? Uh, the manufacturing cost for most of them is in the two to $3 range. So it's, it's, it's about 50, it's a little bit, 50 to 60% is the number you hear. Now, again, that's aggregated. Some are more than others, you sure. know, some are more than others, depends on, and then you've got almost like when you listen to people talk about uh, prescription drugs in America, well, these big companies are spending a fortune. If you ever, if you ever look at like the big L'Oreal research and development labs, they're spending a gazillion dollars trying to develop products for 10 years from now. And I'm talking, I, I, during pandemic, you know, had a meeting with an army of like 30 L'Oreal scientists. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I ever was with that group. And I was like, damn, I was like, there's a lot of you, 30 scientists all in one room. And they're like, oh, this is like tip of the iceberg. Right. <laughs> there's a lot more scientists hidden behind the wall. So they have all those costs too. Yeah, I, I, I kind of understand that because uh, I'm kind of a car nerd. So, you know, I, I, I watch it like, you know, yeah. I just watch this. I just listen to this podcast actually about like the cost of like creating like a new transmission, you know, like, like, yep. it, it, like you know, there's some companies that have notorious bad um, transmissions, but it can cost them, you know, over a couple billion dollars to come up with new technology yep. or better technology. So yep. sometimes they just want to ride that out and pay for, you know, the bad transmissions through your warranty than they do to develop it because it just becomes exactly. a lot cheaper. To and you have that big cost. I come get it reverse engineered. My cost is a fraction of what your cost was and then try to undercut your and, and, and short sell you. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it can go anywhere. Yeah. Tony, you're so ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> I, Tony, I hope you do not have a catalytic converter business on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I hear there's good money in them. Well, 
all over our like next day and our our Facebook pages, there's people uh, you know uh, complaining about their catalytic converters getting stuck. Uh -huh. it, it is a crazy <laughs> business. It is a big um, business. I got a bunch of them in my shed. If y'all need one, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you you're, do. Gonna have, you're gonna have the feds <laughs> coming knocking on your door. Uh huh. <laughs> That's, That's funny. Awesome. That, that is pretty that is pretty funny all right gordon uh, what else can we now okay so we've kind of done that what and you said like the big is the new or the small is the new big and like yeah. i've definitely coined that and we're stealing that for presley poe when i talk about it <laughs> um i i mean we've always we've always done it that way so the fact yeah. that you coined it i'm stealing it or well, i'm certainly i'm i'm i'm, uh, I'm wearing the coat the phrase of it because we've always been a small intimate show well and let me say let me add this that i've added to the the, the that that you borrowed and i tell everybody small is a new big but importantly we've got to do small in a big way and i think that's that's the game changing idea here because you know look small in a big way what does that mean it could mean so many things you know it, how you are behind the chair with your clients and you know did you go over the top to me a small event with sam via is small in a big way and presley poe small in a big way so just by virtue of who you bring you know to the table um, as educators, that all by itself can take small and make it feel big, feel bigger, uh, feel make the experience feel special, um, like your VIPs. You know, that's a, the VIP option is all by itself making small big, in my opinion. Well, right. we 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 definitely like we double down on it. You know, when I heard you say that, I go, yes, that's it. You know, and how how can how can we uh, do other things um, with that same feel? Yep. Hey, look, Corey and I, we 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 struggle to talk so to, to to try to describe something it's even worse right so we, we're always constantly like oh man we didn't do a great job of trying to you know let somebody kind of understand that so yep. from here on out uh we're going to call you because you make it you make it sound just in a few words so on you, know, you understand it you, you know so we we'll use a thousand words and you still don't understand it. So, <laughs> well, if if you're for hire, we'll we'll, we'll please <laughs> call you. You can call me comp comp always. That's awesome. Like Michael Cole, like so much can be said with so few words. You know, you, yep. you've got that, Gordon. We we appreciate we appreciate that, dude. Believe it or not, that's been like fifty five minutes or something. What? Holy um, crap! We hardly talked about anything. I know. <laughs> well, let's get let's let's. Do you have one thing moving forward that that that, that we can that we can attack here in the next few minutes? Tech, I think um, technology. You know, I, I I think we're on the kind of the precipice. You know, the artificial intelligence is the big talk. I've been obsessed with it for quite some while, and it's 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 coming and it's coming quickly. So I think from a technological perspective, you know, which and I'll attach like social media to it. And again, another reason I decided to make my big life change was, you know. I left American Salon because I felt the end of publishing as we knew it was coming and, and, and it happened. We've seen now most of the magazines don't print anymore. They print several times a year. I just heard my friends over at Salon Today talking about that they're moving to a twice a year publication this, this coming year. And, and, and it's a great publication. I've been a fan forever and I'm a fan of their digital stuff, but, but that's changed. Coming out of five years with Hairbrain and, and digital, um, what I was feeling for me, you know, was that the end of, of an era of social and, and social media. And I think TikTok has confused everybody as far as content forms. Instagram has become a bad TikTok for me. So I think although social is really strong, it's really powerful. There's all kinds of opportunity in it. And uh, Michael Cole and I talk about this all the time. It's another small as a new big. I said that to Michael quite a, uh, probably a year ago. I was like, you know, everybody needs to know they don't need 100,000 followers to use it successfully. They need to, they need to get enough followers that make sense for their size business you know you've got a small business you need a couple hundred followers um so that technology the under the underpinnings of social media i believe are shifting in a significant way and they're going to shift really big this year i don't know that the beauty industry is doing a very good job at, at all with tiktok it's a, it's a very confusing time for the industry um i i think the beauty industry is moving in the wrong direction on instagram because it, again it feels like a bad tiktok everything feels the same it's feeling boring um that concerns me um Artificial intelligence, which is at the heart of these platforms, you know, so that's interesting because when you look at what you see on Instagram, artificial intelligence is driving it. The reason TikTok is great is because of artificial intelligence, which drives the algorithm. And 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 now we see artificial intelligence moving towards hair apps and, and, and other things. And so the world will soon be changed by artificial intelligence. It's it's 
uh, I heard recently a, a speaker, he say the big three is the three biggest movements in the modern times, uh, beginning with the information age, the invention of the internet, number one. Number two was the invention of the smartphone by Apple. Some people say, oh, social media. They're like, no, there would be no social media without the phone. Came The phone came, comes first. Um, desktop was on its way out anyway. And the third and coming movement is artificial intelligence. Um, and I just did a podcast. And the last thing I'll say about it, it A, is it is coming. The robots are coming. Um, and by robots, Roomba, the vacuum cleaner, Roomba is a robot. And Roomba is is run in part by artificial intelligence. And if you've ever had a Roomba, you know, you can go to work and set the timer and it roams around your house and does everything. And the power of artificial intelligence. So I just saw a thing about Roomba. Here's what's wrong with Roomba. I don't have one. I, I have my Dyson. I love my Dyson. Um, but the Roomba robot vacuum cleaner, it does not recognize dog poop or dog pee. It tries to scoop that shit up. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's a pro it's a problem it's a fail hey with using artificial intelligence and the evolution of their own uh, algorithms of things that go into the Roomba they have solved the Roomba problem Roomba now recognizes dog poop they've, they've recognized the poop problem and it knows to stop and go around it just like people just like ooh, ooh, go around the poop but it just to me that's like it's 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 going to be in everything, and it's moving so effing fast. Anybody doesn't doesn't believe it? Go try Dolly D A L L space E. Google it, and it's a it's an AI interface where you can make photos, make pictures, make amazing stuff. Um, there's one on there's one on my Instagram um, feed, and I I said, um, show me a hairdresser um, doing a woman's hair Van Gogh style, and it came out as a beautiful starry night picture of of this person getting a haircut and it took three seconds from this random little statement to give me something beautiful um go play with the platforms it's going to change the world and it's i i believe within three years we're going to see a very dynamic shift in the tools that we use it's going to, it's going to impact retail and consultation specifically wow. um real quick just to nerd out with you have you messed around with chat d chat gp yet chat gbt to be specific GBT, yes yes, yes. Um, and and dolly is on that platform and so i'm using both um open ai which is the platform you're talking about yep. um so i i my news so again my website to plug shamelessly is socialbeautymakers.com the first and podcast and podcast um the the first uh the first article you know on that site is about artificial intelligence i wrote the article using chat gbt Oh. I wrote it. I wrote the article now uh, about 80% of it. And I explained that. And, and there's a picture. Go look at it when we get done. Socialbeautymakers.com. Yes. Go look at the picture. It's a robot doing somebody's hair. It was all made. It took three seconds. And all I did was say to Dolly, which is part of what you just described, um, a different interface on the same platform. Um, I just said, give me a 1960 style robot uh, doing a woman's hair. And you'll see the image that is stunning. And it took three seconds. That's and fine. so... I'm, and if you look at my, I did a podcast recently or not, I, I did a post on voice, same thing. So I am using chat GBT and artificial intelligence writing interface to do a lot for me. And if you really want to have fun, I suggest everybody it's free. Go to open AI, uh, Google open AI, get to the site. At the very top, you'll see, try me, hit the try me, um, ask it to write a haircut technical. Ooh, ask it, just say, um, Give me a step-by-step -step how to do a layered haircut on a woman, whatever. Ooh. And sit back and be ready to be amazed. That's incredible. You, I'll tell you how I used it. Uh, just playing with it right over right around Christmas is that um, I, you know, you have to give it a couple prompts, right? Yes. So, you know, the prompts was I did my grandson opening gifts on Christmas morning, but get this Gordon. I did it in the style of Mark Twain and I did it in the style of, uh, of, uh, Stephen King. And it was so cool to kind of, you, you asked for it in that style, right? You asked yeah, for the thing, yeah, yeah. Like, the, give it back the, to me in that style. In the style of is the prompt, like in the style yep. of, um, yep. and then I did it in that prompt and it's, it, it, it's really it's really, really cool. You know, like I, I don't, I, I'm not smart. Like I'm glad there's artificial intelligence because I don't have any of my own. So um, it, 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 it's, it, it, I, I can't quite figure out how it's going to like affect the hair world um, necessarily, it, but it's, it's fun gonna, to play with. It's going to take over a consultation. 80% of hairdressers don't give consultations regularly. It's going to do it for them. Um, it's coming. I swear to God, it's coming. Um, it's already being worked on. Um, and uh, you think the augmented reality mirror 
the, the transition is from the mirror to the app. And so I believe the artificial intelligence app is going to be something we'll all get, you know, Revlon will put it out or Oreo will put it out or XYZ, Amazon will put it out. And the, the person will go, I want a new haircut. I'm going to open the app because I heard about it. It's going to take my picture, probably all sides. And I'm going to say, I want it shorter. I want it longer. I want it upper. I, I want a different color. Tell me what I, the same thing they would say to a hairdresser who does, doesn't give them a satisfactory response. They're going to ask the app and they don't have to be shy about it. This is what I want. It's going to give them options. They're going to see themselves with shorter hair, with blonder hair, with bolder hair, whatever. And instead of ripping the picture out of the magazine, like we did 20 years ago, and here's, I want to look like this person. No, it's going to be you with shorter hair. It's going to be you with bolder hair. You're going to take that little app to the salon. And by the way, as soon as that app tells you, hey, do you like this? Because just like OpenAI, it'll be, do you want, so, you want me to fine tune it a little bit? It will. All this takes seconds. You know, that's the crazy part. It'll Not tell a lot. you how it was executed. It'll, if, if that's what is, is needed. But I believe it will also then you say, yes, I really love this on me. I want to get this at a salon. It'll say, uh, based on your location, here are five salons that do that kind of service and have good reviews. Here's a link to book. If you want to book, you want to book with one of those salons? Press it, you can book. Um, and by the way, Based on this look, these are the products we recommend right now that you consider buying. Put them in your cart immediately and save them till after the haircut. You don't have to buy them now. It could be it could be linked to Amazon as an example. We don't retail. 80% of salons don't retail effectively. And I believe they will solve that problem, not for the salons. Salons that don't retail shouldn't be looking for a solution. When when retail leaves <clears> them, it's because they did it, it's because you did a bad job. Period. And so, so, but clients need retail, clients want retail and artificial intelligence can tell you what product works for what. So I believe the consultation, the retail, the salon locator, all the way through booking, AI is going to flip it on its head. And having said all that, if anybody's going, oh, that's terrible, it's going to be good for the industry. It will drive more business salons. It will, it will, it will be less steps. It will promote the industry. I, 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 I'm excited about it, but I, I believe that's what's going to happen. I love it. Wow. Gordon, once again, I, 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 I love you as a friend. Thank you for you know, all, all the conversations you. that we have, even off air. Um, I, I really appreciate you. I, 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 I say this, I, I end each one of these podcasts the same, like it, um, you mean the world to me. And, you know, the first time that I reached out to you when you didn't, uh, when you didn't even know we had a podcast and, and, and you responded back and, 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 and just gave us the time of day, I've used that as a lesson moving forward. And, you know, I'm always sure to reach out to everybody that reaches out to us or, or, or certainly do the best that I can. And, and, and that was a lesson that I learned early on from you. And I appreciate that. Uh, we won't and I, and I appreciate you. I would say we won't hold you uh, on that last prediction we'll address that in 2026 so there, there you go so <laughs> and, and of course tony who is my preferred podcaster of the two of you i appreciate all the all the all the nice things you had to say Corey. but of course tony is is is, is the special one in the group now i could mean very many things by that um but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, just, we'll, 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 leave, we'll agree with you <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll leave it there um and, and and more seriously i adore both of you and i'm so proud of what both of you have achieved you've been doing it for a very long time now and um uh yeah it's just it's just been amazing to watch you guys to, looking forward to seeing you at the end of march well, I, I got it written down here. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't. I, I don't know if the Greyhound bus goes into wherever it is you're going, but 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 I may consider it. So, um, uh, if you get close enough, we'll send a car for you, Gordon. There you go. All uh, right, uh, Gordon. Real quick, one last shameless plug to the all new, the brand new, the better, the bolder, Gordon Miller. Yeah, socialbeautymakers.com is the website. You can Google for the podcast, but it's also on the website. But it's on all the podcast platforms. Um, I've got two events coming up. Um. And by the time this comes out, they will have been announced. So the fast version of those, they will be kind of mini conferences in the fall. Um, topic specific, they're not about hair. One is called Independence Day. Independence, like with a TS on, not like uh, 4th of July. Let's play on words. Independence Day, the power of one. Um, that will be first or second week in October. And the other event, and they're both going to be digital and in person. Um, and the other event um, we're calling Pride, um, colon, um, queer hair. And by queer, I mean my entire community's act acronym lgbtq ai plus but is it an event both events are really a celebration and inspiration a way for people to connect but they're going to be very very different i'm excited to kind of do my take on a, a little bit of a reinvention of events and they will honor two very specific categories the independence and and my community and all the good work we've done for since the beginning of time in hairdressing 
Well, if you have an other section at the at the Pride one, uh, you know, Count Tony and I am, we'll go sit in the allies. And, and allies. The allies. We we will be welcoming some allies, and you guys are certainly among them. So so I'll absolutely. Miss, uh, allies. And, and put aliens or something. <laughs> <laughs> Alias. <Yeah. laughs> we are going to make you wear funny hats so we don't get confused about who the allies are. But uh, just just a heads up. <laughs> if you looked at Tony and I, I don't think there's any mistake that. Uh, <laughs> <who the allies laughs> <are. laughs> uh, I don't know. There's been, We're, there's been you, mistakes about being hairdressers. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys, because again, we're going to be very represent, representative of the community and both these events are going to be very curated, including the audience will be by, by invitation only. And there's a, be a bigger conversation on that, but we will, of course, in my community's event, um, we have a category of, of the gay uh, community and they're called the bears. And so I don't know if you know about the bears, but, um, but you guys, um, you might easily be, um, spotted incorrectly as amongst the bear crowd as the bear so, so again we we will give you some badges or something so nobody's confused <laughs> not the bears <laughs> <laughs> we don't want the bears confused <laughs> that's awesome gordon yeah. we love you dearly thank you so much you know, thank love you guys once again for joining us on your day off Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.